Hey everybody, what's going on? If you're watching this video, chances are you are a proud owner of a Suzuki DR650. And also, most likely, don't like this 1985 design of signals that come stock on this bike. Now on this bike, we already did the rear revamp. We installed our fender eliminator and integrated tail light combo. Tail light already has signals integrated into it. We also installed a secondary pair of these BL6 signals that we produce and provide to you guys out there. If you're into that kind of thing on the back end of the bike, we have it ready for you at tsdindustries.com. If you're only concerned about the front signals, then this is the video for you. I'm gonna show you how to install one of our signal pairs on the front of this bike. In front of me, you'll see I have a number of different types of signals. These are representative of the signals that we actually currently sell for this bike. In the future, we'll probably sell some more different kinds. We constantly roll out with new designs. It's 2021, this is what we have available. Let me run through the different pairs of signals that we have available, talk a little bit about the differences in them, and then we'll basically take the BL6, mostly because I like this signal type the best for these bikes. We'll show you the install using this. Uh, the sequence of installation is gonna be exactly the same for all these signals. So I don't think we have a problem there. All right, let's start with the Echo signals. These are made of billet aluminum. They're CNC machined. They have one really high power LED inside firing through a pretty sophisticated lens array that gets the light cone really broad. So even though it's a small package, it has a very high light output and a broad cone of light that emits. We have some cool laser engraving on these parts and also feature a silver accent ring that comes stock on them. If you don't like silver, if you wanna spruce it up a little bit, and let's say you like the blues on this bike, I would say you could pick up one of these colored ring pairs. Those are also anodized. They have nice longevity, they're aluminum. You can just replace it in the field, put it on your bike, and you'll have a nice little accent to a nice little pair of signals. If the Aero 18 is your flavor, these are a little bit larger than the other ones here, but still nicer than the stocks. And they feature 18 LEDs. They have a really nice light output and also look like an arrow. So in case anybody wonders which way you're going, this will tell them. BL6 are my favorite. They are slim line. They have a really nice sophisticated lens array. We use line bar lens elements and also optical Fresnels within six SMD LEDs with high power fed to them, emit the light. You have TST Industries engraved on the back and the lens is a really cool shape. They are available in clear or smoked lens. For the smoked lens, we tinted them just a little bit and used blacked out circuit boards inside so we don't lose too much light output. I think that they are pretty equivalent from smoke to clear. Um, choice is really yours. I'm gonna use clear on this bike because we used a clear uh, lens on the tail light and we used clear in the rear. So that's what we're gonna proceed with. Now, a lot of people want flush mount signals. We have sold these for the DRZ400 for many years because people want flush mount signals. On these bikes, the mounting surfaces for the front signals are a little bit receded below the surfaces of the headlight shroud. So you have to make sure that you do your research, you look at the photos in our ads and make sure that this is what you really want. We do have them available, but I tried to dissuade people from buying them. We have really nice pod signals that really do a better job of showing to the front and to the side which direction you're signaling. All right, all of these signals have one thing in common. They terminate in bullet connectors. This is sort of an industry standard. Why? We want them to be adaptable to many, many, many bikes out there. And to make them specific to a certain bike, we have something we called harness converters. On one side, you have the female bullet connectors that basically mate with one of our signals, have insulators on top. And then on the other side, you have an OEM plug. So if you get signal set, and the harness converter set together, you have a plug and play setup. You don't have to do any wiring. No fuss, simple installation, 
on this particular bike, the actual install procedure takes about five minutes. It's really simple. This is the way to go. If you guys are gonna pick up these signals, I urge you to get our harness converters. You can also just chop off a portion of this from the OEM setup and reuse your plug. If you're into wiring and this is what you wanna do, you wanna save a couple bucks, that's also pretty cool. All right, when you go from OEM incandescent light bulb signals that draw a bunch of current to LED type signals, your bike is gonna fast flash. Sometimes it's called hyper flash, some people say hyper blink, whatever it is, the signals are drawing much less current than your OEM signals and the flasher relay will tell it to flash faster to alert you that something's not the same as stock. So some people like to wire in resistors. We don't really like to do that here. We have a plug and play setup that replaces your OEM relay that sits right here under the seat. A couple panels come off, seat comes off. This plugs right in and it cures that problem. It comes preset to 85 cycles per minute. It is adjustable. You can fine tune to your liking. We do have a separate video showing you how to install this should you need it. If you don't, cool with me, you're good to go. One other nuance that this particular bike, it's, it's unique to this bike, is that when you go from OEM signals to LED signals, both sides start flashing together. I can throw a bunch of jargon at you and tell you why that happens. I'll keep it simple. Your signaling circuits from, for the two sides are coupled to ground through the indica dash indicator light and you bleed signal and you end up having hazards instead of directionals. So we've come up with this diode mod that is also plug and play and it plugs in right under the headlight shroud. You disconnect one set of connectors, you plug this in line, you're good to go. Those guys that have owned this bike for many, many years and have experimented with different signals will probably already have this squared away. For those of you guys that are just getting into LED signals, I urge you to get this in the same order so you don't have to order twice. We'll show you how to install these signals. We'll show you the symptoms. We'll show you the cure to the symptoms, but we do have separate videos showing the detail of installation for everything. So hopefully you'll check out our other videos. And uh, at this point, I could relieve myself from all this yapping Hey, get some tools, let's get going. Step one, we're gonna grab a fat old Phillips screwdriver and remove this fastener here, one right here, and then another one on the opposite side of the bike. I'm using a number three Phillips head here. When we remove these fasteners, there are T washers inserted into the shroud from the inside, inboard from the center plane of the bike and also from underside here. When we remove the shroud, let's make sure that we retain those. One other note is the bottom one here is a little bit longer and the side ones are shorter. Remember that for reassembly. And it just pops off easy like that. And now we have access to all this wiring here. The bike is brand new. You'll notice one connector with two conductors sitting on top. There's a cable tie that holds it together. It is reusable. We're gonna retain it and use it in the reassembly. And then we have this sheath here that's held by Velcro. I'm just gonna remove it so we don't have any obstructing geometry. And now we need to identify the wires and connectors for the signals. And just grab your signals, run up the line, and you'll notice you have one black connector. And then from the other side, you have one gray connector. So gray is left, black is right. You lift up on the locking device and withdraw the plug. And now we have our signals electrically disconnected. We'll grab a 14 millimeter open-ended wrench and crack the nuts loose that hold the signal lamps on. Carefully withdraw the connector and wire and just repeat that on both sides. Now we need to grab appropriate side light. They are side specific. If you notice, 
we do have TST Industries written on the back. So if you've installed it and it's upside down, you probably have left and the right, right and the left. They will still function the same. They will still have the same light emission. I just like to have, have them look proper. So TST Industries upright and I just grabbed the left side. We're gonna spin off the nut. And the nut typically comes off with one bullet connector at a time. And then I'll take the washers off. We have a flat washer against the signal and then a split washer in between the nut and the flat washer. I'm gonna get this seated in the OEM mount. If for some reason you have an older bike that's been modified and you don't have this mount, we do sell brackets that accomplish this mounting. They're just not keyed like the OEM brackets. So it'll get you by, but probably not as nice as the OEM brackets. Let's get the flat washer on. Let's get the split washer on. And then the nut, advance it up here and start threading this nut on the stud. I do want to mention here that the slots left behind from the OEM setup are pretty big compared to the M8 stud that protrudes out of this. So we'll have to fine tune how this thing hangs and make sure that it's not lopsided or something. If that is too crude for you, you can grab some washers that have ID of eight millimeters or nine millimeters or something equivalent. And the OD, obviously you want it to be larger than the hole on the accepting bracket. And you can do that. For me, I'm okay just mounting them the way we've designed them. Just make sure that the center plane of all the LEDs is parallel to the ground. And then I'm gonna lock this down using a 12 millimeter open-ended wrench for this. Unfortunately, the brake hose is in the way and you guys may not be able to see it, but you'll see it on the other side. And this is very simple. You just turn the nut on until you compress the split washer and you could go just a little bit further to make sure that there's a little bit of preload from the rubber part here against against this bracket. This will keep extra friction on it. Don't want to over tighten it because this rubber is over molded in a machine process on the actual metal part. If you over tighten it, there's a very good chance that you'll damage it. So I'm not exactly parallel to the ground here. So I'm going to loosen it up a little bit and try it again until I get it right. And that does it for me here. I'm going to grab my harness converter, find the end of my wire, try to replicate the routing of the stock signal. So I'm going up above this component here. I believe that's the choke cable. And this is very simple, yellow to yellow, black to black. Easy peasy, that's how we do things here. Now you notice, I do have insulators here. They do have the ability to slide back and forth. So what's necessary here is that we lock them in place. Should they ever slip off, touch together, you have a short circuit, you draw infinite current until your fuse blows. You don't want that. Let's get them locked down, grab some electrical tape. I favor the positive side, which is yellow. I lock that, lock that down first, make sure it is absolutely positively locked down. And then I'll grab my electrical tape roll and give both of these connectors a winding, making sure that it's tight 
when you get this nice and tight, it prevents water from getting in and possibly degrading your contacts. So you can keep these intact for more than 15 years and you'll be fine. Once I've made this winding here nice and tight and neat, I'm gonna test my connection. I think I have this backwards. Nope. All right, so that's my left signal. I don't know if you guys can make it out, but it is flashing. It's just flashing very rapidly. And this is the symptom of doing LED signals all around. Now I have the rear and the front in uh, LED style signals. So we basically just have almost a solid light. It does flash <laughs> at a very high frequency. We are going to have to change the relay on this bike so we'll show you that in a separate video i'm going to perform the same exact steps on this side without commentary All right, I have both of them plugged in. All of the signals are LED type signals. Now we don't have the signal side separation anymore. I did mention that in our intro. So the fix for that is our diode mod. You will have to unplug this larger connector here. This is blue, this is blue. The way you identify it is that this has six positions. This one only has two. We want the six position guy and we basically just connect our diode mod setup through this, curl it over so we could contain it in there. And now we test it. Now you have flash restored to the side specific to which side you want to signal to, but it is flashing a little fast still. For some guys, this will be just fine. Some guys will want it to be the stock 85 cycles per minute. Those guys will have to replace their signal relay with our LED type signal relay. All right, let's get back into the reassembly. So this sheath has to go back in. I put the rough patches on the bottom under all the wires. Smooth side goes up. Try to capture all of this wiring up through there. And now we just have to distribute the bulk in a way that makes sense and everything stays in there, making sure that where the connections are made is kind of in the center of this sheath. It's responsible for keeping water out of there as much as possible. And also when you have slack here, this will let you take up the slack and have a nice, neat setup. All right, just close this over the top. If you wanna maintain this one connector that was out up above, like in the stock setup, this is your chance to do it. I believe this is some sort of accessory power. Now we grab our replaceable cable tie and get everything cinched down. Now I did grab this headlight frame with this tie to make sure that we have our wires all tied off and they won't be flopping around in there. Have a little bit more bulk now to close up this tie over, but still Plenty of tie to go around the whole thing, neaten this area up, and now we're ready for the shroud. Now, like I mentioned, you do have these inserts in here. If you lose them, you're gonna end up tightening your screws against the plastic and squash the plastic. So if they're not here, look around on the floor, make sure you find them. This installation's a lot better in this way. The longer screw on the bottom 
shorter screws from the sides. And that's all there is to it. Now we're done. As you just witnessed, this is a very, very straightforward installation, couple minutes to success, and you have a way different front end right from the get. All right, if you guys like these parts or any of the other parts that we've mentioned in this video, tstindustries.com is your source. We have a bunch of different parts for this bike, DRZ 400s, and also sport bikes and mini bikes, and maybe we have something for you. Thank you for watching, ride safe, see you next time.